Hello and welcome to Straight Talk. It's a bright future ahead for Canterbury dairy processor Sinlay after an $82 million investment by China's third largest dairy company, Bright Dairies. The startup company, which ditched plans to list on the New Zealand share market last year, says it's full steam ahead with building a new plant which will be processing milk in the 2011 12 season. But questions are being raised about continued Chinese interest in New Zealand dairying, particularly as natural dairy's quest to buy the Crafer farms continued. Is too much valuable agricultural land and infrastructure passing out of New Zealand's hands? Especially when Lincoln and a top Chinese university are talking about collaborating on research in the areas of nitrification inhibitors, tenderisation of beef and lamb with kiwi fruit juice and biosecurity. And what about New Zealand farming ventures overseas, with news this week that PGG Wrightson intends to sell all its shares in New Zealand farming systems Uruguay to a big Singapore company. Closer to home, there have been two black eyes for our rural communities. A dog attack on a heavily pregnant ewe and newborn lambs on Waiheke Island, and yet another fine, this one $60,000 for dirty dairying in the Bay of Plenty. Today I'm joined by National Business Review editor Neville Gibson and freelance journalist Keith Stewart. Well, Neville, this interest uh, from the Chinese in New Zealand uh, doesn't seem to be letting up. It certainly isn't. This is part of a world tsunami seeking uh, food-related investments and there's no question that New Zealand's going to be caught up in it. This is just the start of a, a pretty significant trend that uh, has started with China and probably India looking offshore to buy as much, uh, not necessarily land, but they certainly want what comes from the land. And I think we've got to be adopting a strategy that uh, takes care of both, that we're going to get a lot of foreign investment, but at the same time, if people want to retain land ownership in New Zealand, there's ways around it. Oh, we're seen as a bit of an easy touch. No, we've got no capital, that's the problem, and uh, there's no local well, buyers. Well, that makes and... us an easy touch, doesn't it? <laughs> well, no, we're not an easy touch in the sense that we need to uh, give it all away, mm. but we do need overseas capital, and these, uh, particularly with the Sinlate deal, these are the markets that we need as well. Mm -hmm. Keith, what do you think? The Sinlate deal, it appears to have been uh, generally welcomed by... Uh, by commentators saying uh, this is a, a large Chinese company that's coming in, Sinlay uh, had cash problems, it's a good solution. No, it's mm. not a good solution. I mean, uh, Sinlay is now no longer in control. That's the first thing, the control's now in China. Try doing that in China in reverse. Mm -hmm. There's absolutely no way that would happen. Mm -hmm. um, we, we're a bunch of prostitutes, really. We get on our backs for absolutely anything, mm -hmm. so long as it's got money involved. Mm -hmm. And in this particular case, what is the contribution here? We're building a new big plant to make some more infant food, infant dairy food, for the company that used to put melamine in it? Sounds dodgy to me. It sounds like you know a disaster waiting to happen. They're still finding melamine. The last discovery of melamine in infant uh, foods in China was two weeks ago mm -hmm. from the same company. Mm -hmm. So they haven't got rid of it. They're still trying to palm it off. Mm. Nothing's changed. So we're getting into bed with these people in New Zealand. Mm. Is this going to uh, compromise uh, the international reputation of New Zealand dairy foods? Well, uh, Neville, it's one of the issues, isn't it, that uh, the Chinese want to come to New Zealand because of our food safety uh, assurances? That's right. I think yeah, Keith's uh, reaction is, is quite emotional and it's probably quite real. Melamine does exist in these sort of products in any case in very small traces and they're not harmful and the Chinese are certainly onto that. But it's a large country, very hard to uh, manage everything that's going on. And, mm. you know, obviously and we can help there. But the key thing here is that... Uh, when New Zealand investors were asked to invest in Sinlay last year, they didn't want to. And I talked to financiers about this, and it was because the company was too heavily indebted. It didn't have guaranteed markets and had got well ahead of itself uh, in uh, seeking money without returns. You see, and investors don't like that sort of thing. But overseas people who've got more money take a longer view. Keith, how are we best able to exploit the huge opportunity that China uh, presents if we're not going to let them invest? Or are we going to be uh, rigorous about uh, them only investing up to and not above 50% in New Zealand companies? Well, it depends on what we want to do. Mm -hmm. I mean, fundamentally, agriculture has to make a decision that it's put off for the last, what, 
a century, really. Um, we, I just heard some conversation about they didn't have a guaranteed market. What's a guaranteed market again? Mm. Where is this guaranteed market that we have? There is no such thing as a guaranteed market. We thought we had a guaranteed market in Britain. When we couldn't afford to send the meat over there at the right price for the British, mm. we gave money to our farmers so they continued to let the British have meat mm. for a cheap price. Mm. Then what happened? Mm. We changed the rules. We lost a complete meat sector. Still hasn't recovered. Mm. But it's a very different situation now, isn't it, Neville, in that the Chinese have the money, they have the market. It's a huge got growing mouths. opportunity. Yeah, when I say guaranteed market, what we're mm. talking about is places who are going to buy the products. Mm. Obviously, after the tail of the product to the customer, there's a huge demand for infant formula in China. We know that. There are hungry mouths, millions of them, that are going to be born over the next uh, 10 years. Mm. Everyone knows that. And... Mm. Uh, the food uh, industry in New Zealand is highly efficient, but in Africa it isn't. Mm. So the big smart money from London and hedge funds, that sort of thing, is going to be going into Africa to provide infrastructure, agricultural investment mm. and that kind of thing. And that's the sort of area where New Zealand's a leader. Right. So uh, coming to uh, Crafer Farms, uh, what's the uh, timetable there, uh, Neville? We're likely to know something uh, within oh, the next it's, wee it's, while. A, it's a mystery within a <laughs> puzzle, isn't it? Uh, I don't know, but the strategy there of natural dairy is that they really want to own a big dairy factory and produce, just like Sinlay is. But to buy the farms first is probably the wrong strategy, and they're certainly going to run into... Uh, possibly a brick wall there if they'd done it the other way around. Because essentially you don't need to own the farms to get the products they want to sell in China. But natural dairies doesn't come with the same bona fides as uh, bright, uh, bright dairies, do they? Oh, no, no. Bright food is a huge... Uh, group and mm. the dairy part's just part of it, it's $10 billion business. They've got enough money that they could have bought CSR's sugar interest. Mm. They got gazumped by a Singaporean uh, mm. firm because they are, go all companies in China are government sort of controlled or Communist Party controlled. So they don't have flash amounts of money and sometimes they just can't match what the Western companies can do. Mm. So Keith, you could argue that uh, whereas the uh, Crafer farm potential buyers, there's some doubts about them, uh, with the Sinlay investor, we're, we're dealing with a, a totally different class of Chinese investor. Shouldn't we ha be happy the, the good guys want us? Not necessarily. I mean, uh, I just can't understand, and I never have been able to understand, how we trade off our raw materials for overseas investment. As I said before, we did it with the British. This is exactly the same. Mm. The British looked like a wonderful place to send our product to. They spoke the same language as us. Mm. They were just as hungry as the Chinese are now. How long will this particular secure investment last? Or will we need, for the first time in our lives, to grow up, decide what sort of products we're going to sell to the world? I mean, we're protein producers. Mm. We have 5% of the... Of, we produce 5% of the world's market in protein. Mm. Where's the problem? Mm. I just can't understand why we have to just lie on our back and say, give us some money, give us some money, mm. and we'll do anything for you. Mm. Neville, what about the uh, issue of Lincoln University getting involved with a large Chinese university uh, looking into these three areas which are uh, pretty dear to uh, New Zealand's agricultural well, this future? Is th these are three areas and they have correctly identified what they can't do and New Zealand can. Mm -hmm. And you can use kiwi fruit, which they've got plenty of back in China. So this looks like one-way technology transfer. What is Lincoln going to get out of it? Well, they'll probably get a lot of students coming from China, so I guess there's something in it for them. Yeah, what do you think, Keith? I, th I, I think you hit it right on the head there, actually. It's about students coming out of China yeah. and helping to fund the organisation. Are there real worries about giving away some uh, intellectual property here? Uh, I don't think so. No, no, no. They, they'd think get so. that anyway. Science um, is an open, it should be an open thing, mm. um, you know, and, and this has probably got more to do with getting Chinese students into, in, into Lincoln and in, in, in improving their bottom line than it has to do with sharing research. Mm. But uh, we should be uh, concerned, uh, should we, about other New Zealand uh, investments um, overseas in uh, Uruguay. The